The internet is so full of talk around being in a relationship with an Italian and what it's like to date an Italian and what are the most common stereotypes about Italians in relationships, especially the men. It's full, full, full of everyone giving their thoughts and the outcome of it are the stereotypes that we've all heard a million times. Italians are very passionate, but also very short-tempered, attached to their families, sometimes too much. They may seem more laid back when it comes to settling down and they're the definition of the Latin lover. I mean, after all, Casanova was Italian. As someone who recently married an Italian after eight years of courtship, I wanted to deep dive on this topic and at least try to set the record straight once and for all. Italian partnerships, specifically Italian partnerships in Italy, what are they really like? My name is Tia and welcome to Impact, a series where I try to not only unpack my metaphorical suitcase after 10 years of living as an American in Italy, but also unpack stereotypes with the end goal of reaching a place of greater understanding. I think a lot of stereotypes around Italian relationships stem from the fact that they're perceived as more old-fashioned and traditional. Men like to court and women like to be courted, which can be interesting coming from a culture where traditional gender roles aren't as entrenched anymore. Well, here's what the numbers say. Italy's National Institute of Statistics, better known as ISTAT, did a survey and published its findings in a 2019 press release. The report, which was titled Gender Roles, Stereotypes, and Attitudes to Sexual Violence, found that the most common stereotypes concerning traditional gender roles were that for a man more than a woman, it is very important to be successful at work, with 32.5% of respondents finding themselves in agreement, that men are less suitable for doing housework, with 31.5% of respondents agreeing, and that it's up to a man to provide for a family's financial needs, with 27.9% of respondents agreeing. Just for comparison's sake, an American study based on data from 1977 to 2016 found that a little under 25% of American respondents thought that, while women should have the same opportunities as men to work or participate in politics, they should still take on a bigger role in the household. This so-called difference that you might be feeling could lay in that 7%. The Italian study found that there weren't big differences between the opinions of men and women, and unsurprisingly, agreement increased with age, but still, 45.3% of respondents aged 18 to 29 agreed with these statements, which I think is interesting just because personally, I do feel that amongst my generation and younger, people are more, no pun intended, married to the ideas of traditional gender roles than we'd even expect. Just think of the current stay-at-home girlfriend trend on TikTok. Agreement is also less prevalent as education levels increase, and I think it's useful to couple that observation with the fact that only 20% of Italians aged 25 to 34 have a college degree, which is lower than the OECD average of 30%. Finally, there are regional differences. The ESTAT survey reported that gender role stereotypes were more frequent in Southern Italy, especially in Campania and Sicily, and less spread in the Northeast, with the lowest agreement in Friuli Venezia Giulia. These numbers were interesting because even in the most liberal regions in the study, around half of respondents still agreed with the traditional gender role ideas. These numbers could explain the feeling that a lot of outsiders have in saying that Italy is a country where traditional gender roles are more expected and dare I say, pushed. And they're not just expected by individuals, but they're also reinforced by institutions. As we touched on in the episode about Italian families, the woman's place in Italian society has changed pretty rapidly in the last 50 years, going from total legal subjugation to having full rights through legislation. Family law in Italy is all-encompassing, divorce and abortion are legal. Women have the same right to be an equal head of the household, and this wasn't the case until it became law in 1975. Before the 1975 law, women didn't even have the same rights to be legal guardians over their children, for example. At least on paper, one would say that women in Italy have all the rights they need. But the reality is complicated, due to more than 100 years of culture and legal framework that existed before 1975. This is evidenced by the fact that though, for example, abortion is legal in Italy, doctors can choose to object to provide abortions, and as of 2013, 70% of doctors in Italy do. Some regions have more than 90% of doctors who are conscious objectors, so yeah, abortion is legal in Italy, but... 
Abortion is just one hot topic example, but there are plenty of ways that the Italian government itself reinforces traditional gender roles. For example, women get ample maternity leave, 22 weeks. Meanwhile, you know how many fathers get? One. I don't think it gets more clear than that regarding who the government thinks should stay at home with the kids. It's funny because meanwhile in the US, the government doesn't give any maternity leave to either parent, so they're saying that them kids are just gonna raise themselves. No, but in all seriousness, the framework needed to enhance gender equality where the inequality becomes most stark, so when it comes to reconciling work and family, is not present in most countries in the world, and this includes Italy. The last piece of the Italian relationship puzzle is courtship. The stereotype is that Italians are slow to settle down, and even more specifically, slow to marry. I must say that as someone who has married an Italian after eight years of being together. No, actually I won't say, let's just see what the numbers are. These days, Italians are getting married later and less. As of 2019, the average age for women in Italy to get married was 32. Meanwhile, the average age for men was 34. In 1980, these ages were 24 and 27 respectively. It's been said that this change is the result of social and economic changes that have prolonged the path to adulthood. Studies last longer and entrance into the Italian labor market is later and often unstable. Additionally, there are choices, such as dedicating more time to experiences or personal growth, or not getting married at all, which are more socially acceptable today than they were before. I can say in my own experience that a mix of all these factors played a role in our choices as a couple. We both thought that marriage would probably be around the same time as having kids, and we didn't want to have kids or get married before being very financially solid. We talked about marriage once we realized we were in a serious relationship, so like two, three years in. Enrico said he didn't see himself getting married before 30, and I wanted to be married by 25. So our compromise ended up being to get married when I was 26 and he was 27. This delay was absolutely because some of the conditions were not met. And it's funny because on the one hand, we were the first of our friends to get married and there were lots of comments on how we were getting married so young. But simultaneously, on the other hand, we were also receiving lots of questions about and light pushes towards having kids. In the end, we're still not having kids for a few years because we still want to travel a bit without kids, develop ourselves and our careers a bit without kids, and yes, earn more money to be able to give our kids what is in our minds a good definition of a good childhood. And a good childhood in 2022 Italy costs a lot. And I won't even lie, despite the fact that I want to be a mom and think I could even be a decent one, knowing what is expected of an Italian mother by Italian society does make me want to delay motherhood for as long as I can. The wait for baby Tenrico continues. In conclusion, thankfully, when you couple with a person, it doesn't mean that you're coupling with their birth countries, institutions, or historical baggage. On the individual level, individuals are individuals, and any of these things could be more or less true. If anything, this information is useful to know because it explains what societal pressures are at play when being with an Italian in Italy, and depending on your own personal beliefs and upbringing, you may or may not want your relationship to be based here. I mean, would this work for you? Or are there some big no-nos? Are there aspects of this setup that you think you would like? Let me know in the comments. Everyone has different boundaries and I'm curious to hear yours. I wanna thank you guys for sticking to the end of this video. Thank you for choosing to spend your time listening to me and I thank you for helping me unpack. I hope my point of view could inspire you to consider another perspective and go beyond the stereotype. If you found this video interesting, don't forget to say it and maybe even consider subscribing since there are more like it still to come. Hope to see you guys in my next one.